I today we're going to be talking about the very first revelation of Muhammad, the revelation he received from Allah through Angel Gabriel as he claimed. Now in Quran chapter 96, which is actually the very first revelation of Muhammad, we were told what Muhammad was told to read. In fact, let's read the Quran to see what it says in Quran chapter 96. We read, Read in the name of your Lord, who has created all that exists. He has created man from a piece from a cloth, a piece of thick coagulated blood. Read, and your Lord is the most generous, who has taught the writing by the pen, and it goes on and on. Now, if you're just like every other person who have not really studied about Islam, or even read the history of Islam, or even do a little bit of an um, analysis on it, you will think that the revelation that Muhammad um, you know, received from Angel Gabriel is just as easy as that. In fact, sometimes when you're reading Islamic publications, just like the one that I'm holding here, which is actually a brief illustration guide to understanding Islam, you're going to be reading something very smooth, easy, and um, nice to hear. A good example is what you have in chapter 1 of this book, which is actually the page 5. I read, The Quran is the literal word of God, which is which he revealed to his prophet through the angel Gabriel. It was memorized by Muhammad, who then detected it to his companion. They, in, in turn, memorized it, wrote it down, and also reviewed it with the prophet Muhammad. Now, if you're just like me also, if you have been reading or watching documentaries about um, the revelation of Muhammad, especially his call to prophethood, you must have seen something like this also. So, uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to pray to his maker, the one and only, the one Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his maker, uh, for solutions, for assistance, for guidance, and so on. And Jibril, Gabriel, the archangel, may peace be upon him, uh, descended one day and read the following verses. And this was the beginning of revelation that was given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was instructed, iqra, iqra meaning read. And the honest man that he was, he was unlettered. He immediately said, ma ana biqari, I, I cannot read. And he was asked again to read, read. Uh, he says, Ma ana biqari, I cannot read. And so what happened is, uh, the third time, Jibreel alayhi salam, may peace be upon him, the angel Gabriel came in uh, with some beautiful revelation, a continuation. So he said, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Rabb. The term Rabb would mean the one who created you, the maker, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider. All these terms are included in the meaning of the term Rabb. So he said, uh, read in the name of your Rabb who has created, uh, created خَلَقَ insana min alaq, created man from a clot. And these were the first uh, verses of revelation given to Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And as he got these verses, uh, he then rushed down from that particular mount, uh, from the cave of Hira, and he went to his wife Khadija. Binti Khuwailid radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her, Khadija, the daughter of Khuwailid, and what he asked her to embrace him, to, to hug him tightly, basically. And that is what she did. Uh, she enveloped him, she hugged him tight. And subhanallah, uh, it was something so amazing because he narrated what happened. And when he narrated what happened, uh, he was faced with his wife who firstly believed him and secondly sought help because obviously he was very and there you go specifically so just talking about how muhammad got the revelation from you know in Gabriel and all of that there is no other details that is being shown to the public and i find this very troubling and very problematic why because when you go into the islamic sources especially the narration of the prophet which is actually their deed you know that explains his, his um, action as his deed you discover that there is something much more beyond what you have read in this publication or what you have watched in the documentary and that's what we're going to be doing right now. We're going to be turning to the Hadith, the Sahih Buhari. Now, there are a whole lot of Hadith, but we're going to be turning to the Sahih Buhari, which is actually one of the collection of the sayings and, you know, the actions of the Prophet. So we're going to be turning to this particular edition, um, particular um, section of the Hadith. And this is volume one. We're going to be reading Hadith number three. So that is Sahih Buhari, volume one, Hadith number three. We wanted to see the account of Muhammad. We wanted to see how... He received his revelation. So we turn to the Hadith. Narrated by Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, the commencement 
of divine revelation to our last messenger was in form of a good righteous true dreams, which came true like bright daylight. And then the love of seclusion was bestowed upon him, and he used to go into seclusion, go into seclusion in the cave of Ira, where he used to worship Allah alone continuously for many nights before returning of his desire to see his family. He used to take with him the journey food for the stay and come back to his wife Khadija to take his food likewise again till suddenly the truth descended upon him while he was in the cave of Ira. Now, this is telling us that <clears throat> why Muhammad usually go to the cave of Ira, sometimes he spends some days there, especially even take food with him because he want to go do some medication, uh, sorry, me meditation. Um, the Adit narrated by Aisha actually says that the truth suddenly descended upon him. Now, before this time, we wonder where the truth was actually. Before this time, we wonder the state of Muhammad. Now, if the truth is suddenly dependent upon Muhammad, when he went to the cave of Ira, the question we're going to be asking is this. What was the state of Muhammad before the truth descended upon him? Let's read further. The angel came to him and asked him to read. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read. The prophet added, the angel came, the angel caught me forcefully and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. He then released me again and asked me to read, and I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon, he caught me again and pressed me a second time till I could not bear it anymore. Then released me and asked me again, and asked me again to read. But again, I replied, I do not know how to read, or what shall I read? Thereupon, he caught me for the third time and pressed me, and then released me and said, Read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exist. Now we read in this narration how the angel came to Muhammad in Jagibra. Even though we are not told who the angel is, there was no introduction of the angel. There was no mention of the angel's name. The angel did not even introduce himself so we get to know the kind of angel that was talking to Muhammad. But according to the narration, when Muhammad got the revelation and the angel asked him to read, now, Muhammad, according to the Islam, um, Navi, um, Islamic um, history and tradition, is an illiterate prophet, somebody that cannot read nor write. So when the angel came to him and asked him, um, Muhammad, read, Muhammad says, no, I do not know how to read. And the angel called him, according to him, according to the narration of Sahih Bukhari, Muhammad said, the angel caught me forcefully and pressed me so hard till I could no longer bear it anymore. Now imagine that for a moment, that somebody caught you and pressed you so hard and you say you couldn't bear it anymore. Now that statement stands to me or sounds to me as a statement of somebody that is almost giving up. Now I don't know how the angel caught him, I don't know how he pressed him so hard, but one thing I'm very sure of is this, that the angel almost killed him. Now if I say that somebody caught me and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it any longer, what is that supposed to mean? that I couldn't hold it any longer, that I've almost given up. Now the question we need to ask at this point is this. If the angel knew that Muhammad is an illiterate prophet, if the angel knew that Muhammad cannot read and write, if the angel knew that Muhammad does not even have an idea of what he's asking him to read, why is the angel trying to press him to hard? Why is the angel trying to kill him? Now you might be saying I'm reading into this adit, but then what else could you come out with when an angel is pressing somebody out and the person is saying, I could no longer bear it. Now let's read further. He created man from a piece, he created man from a cloth, a piece of thick coagulated blood. Read that your Lord is the most high generous. Quran chapter 96, 1 to 3. Now this is in confirmation to what we read before in Quran chapter 96, which is actually the first revelation of Muhammad. Not Quran chapter 1, Quran chapter 9 says actually the very first revelation of Muhammad. So let's go further. Then Allah's supposed to return with the revelation and with his heart beating severely. Then he went to Khadija bin Kuwait and said, Cover me, cover me. They covered him till his fear was over. And after that, he told Khadija everything that had happened and said, I fear that something may happen to me. Now, after this experience, Muhammad was very afraid. 
He was very afraid for his life because it was a strange experience for him. Not only that, was he told to read something that he could not read because he's an illiterate prophet, but because he was almost killed because of the terrible experience that he had in the hands of the angel um, called Jibril. Now, remember that I told you that the name of the angel was not mentioned. We don't know if it was actually Jibril, but then it was not mentioned, but then we just assumed that it was Jibril because in the Quran and later Islamic tradition, we learned that it was Jibril that was coming to him. But right here, we were not told the kind of angel that came to him. But one thing I'm so sure about is this. Now, the kind of angel that will come to an individual that wants to bring the revelation of God to an individual, when he sees that individual, what would the angel do? Or what is the angel supposed to do? I think the angel is supposed to say something like, um, don't be afraid. I've come to you with a good news. I've come to deliver to you the message of your Lord. Even if you're afraid, calm down. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just not coming here to come and give you the revelation or the message from your Lord. But that is not what the angel Jibril did. Um, just like one of my mentors would say, a friend, it would say that um, it's Jibril the terrible. Um, Jibril did not do that. Jibril actually terrorized Muhammad and almost killed him to the extent that Muhammad was afraid. He ran to the house with his heart beating severely and he called that he should be covered. In fact, his wife and those who were around, they covered him. And the Hadith says that they covered him till his fear was over. Now, do you think that kind of a revelation is from God? Now, I've never seen a revelation in the Bible or from the previous prophet that, that is like that. And you know what? The Quran made us to know that the revelation that Muhammad received is also the same kind of revelation that had been given to the previous prophet. So the question we're going to be asking is this. How can the previous prophet receive revelation from the same God, from the same spirit, but the similar experience in terms of torture? Now, I've not seen in the Bible or even in the previous um, um, scripture where an angel will come to a prophet and ask the prophet to read Especially when the angel knew that the prophet cannot read and decide to torture the prophet and decide to almost kill the prophet for what the prophet does not know how to do. Let's read further. Adija replied, Never by Allah. Allah will never disgrace you. You keep good relations with your kid and king. Help the poor and destitute. Serve your guests generously and assist the deserving calamity afflicted ones. Khadija accompanied her Accompany him to her cousin, Waraka ibn Nafar, ibn Asad, ibn Abdulazar, who during the period of ignorance became a Christian and used to write the writing with the Hebrew letter. Now there's something very important going on here. After Muhammad received the revelation, he was afraid, he was scared. He thought something was going to happen to him. Now there was no assurance that he has received something from God. He was really, really, very much afraid. That, but when he got to him, he told Khadija, his wife, um, everything that he has experienced. And Khadija told him, "When you see Muhammad, nothing is going to happen to you. You see, you are you are a very good person in the society. You help people. I mean, for the people that that are less privileged, you assist them. You are a very kind person, good person. So nothing will happen to you. So what did Warak uh, Khadija did? Khadija actually took Muhammad to a cousin. And this cousin is actually Waraka. Now, Waraka, according to the Adit narration, is um, somebody that actually became a Christian during the time of um, the uh, the uh, the time of um, ignorance. They call it in the Islamic term the Jaliya period. Now, Waraka became a Christian, and according to this Adit, he used to write the you know the uh, the Hebrew writing of the Bible. In other words, he used to write the scripture in Hebrew. Now, that is not what we're going to be talking about today, whether the Torah and the Injil or the previous scriptures was available in the time of Muhammad. We're going to be discussing that in another episode. But today, what we're going to do, uh, what we're going to be emphasizing on is to look at the revelation of Muhammad. So when Waraka um, got to see Muhammad, uh, um, Aisha, sorry, Khadija begin to tell, you know, the story and all of that. And I asked Muhammad to also narrate the audio. No, instead of me jumping the cat before the earth, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to read the story for you, so you see from the edit. So I'm not, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm not accused of putting into the edit what is not actually there. Let's continue reading. He will write the gospel in Hebrew as much as Allah would wish him to write. He was an old man, and he has lost his eyesight. Khadija said to Waraka, "Listen to the story of your nephew, oh my cousin." Waraka asked, "Oh my nephew." What have you seen? Allah's messenger described whatever he had seen. 
Waraka said, This is the same one who keep the secret, that in Jejibre, whom Allah had sent to Musa. I wish I was young. I wish I was young and could live up to the time when your people would turn you out. Allah's messenger said, Would they drive me out? Waraka replied in the affirmative and said, Any man who came with something similar to what you have brought was treated with hostility, and if I should remain alive till the day when you would return out, then I will support you strongly. But after a few days, Waraka died, and the divine revelation was also paused for a while. Now, see what happened. After Muhammad narrated his experience to Waraka, Waraka told Muhammad, actually, see what happened to you is nothing new. <clears throat> this is the same angel. You see, the angel that came to you the same angel that also came to, um, to Moses and also gave Moses um, some revelation. Now, this is actually false because um, <laughs> there was never anything like that in the Torah that suggested that, um, you know, Moses had that kind of experience in the first place. Moses did not have that kind of experience. And secondly, it was Waraka that was telling Muhammad the name of the angel that came to him to give him revelation. In other words, Muhammad was clueless as to what happened to him. He was not so sure. He wasn't even um 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 he wasn't he wasn't even a certain of what is going to happen to him. Because when he saw the thing that happened to him, when the angel grabbed him and then almost killed him, and he was almost dying, it was like something terrible was gonna to happen to him. And eventually he was very afraid and he thought that he was going to Sometimes it, it thought something terrible was going to happen to him. Not that he was even thinking he was going to die because the thing was just very much on him. The depression was on him. He was thinking, what kind of an experience is this? That is the kind of experience that Muhammad had. The very first revelation that he had. It was a very terrible experience. Now, I've asked a couple of my friends that are Muslims and I asked them about the, um, you know, the revelation of Muhammad. And some of them said, well, there's nothing unique about it. The prophet is human. He experienced things that human experience, which I actually agree with. The prophet is human and he experienced things that other people experience. But the problem here is that why should an angel from God, an angel from Almighty God, wanting to kill a prophet when he knew that the prophet does not know how to read and write. Why does he want to kill him? Why is he forcing him to do what he does not know how to do? Now, if we say, okay, probably the angel is ignorant. The angel does not know that the prophet is an illiterate. How about the God that sent the angel? Is the God also ignorant? Is the God not knowing also that the revelation is sending to this person to read, if it's probably a book or whatever, is also... Um, not, you know, it's, it's, it's something that the person cannot read despite the fact that the person is an illiterate. How can you go give something that you know somebody cannot do and give it to the person and, and tell them that they must do it, you know, and torture them that they must do it? Let me give you a practical example. Now, if I know that I, 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 I can't speak um, Hebrew and, um, and you come to me with an Hebrew textbook and give it to me to read and I tell you, well, what can I read here? I don't know how to read Hebrew. What am I going to read? And you tell me, no, that I have to read it. And you're commanding me to read it. And you're beating me. That if I don't read it, you're going to beat me. And you're actually beating me because I can't read it. Why would you do something like that when you fully know that I can't read this language? When you fully know that this language is not in my mother tongue or that I've not even learned anything about it? Now, in the modern world, you call that injustice. Actually, that is what happened to Muhammad. The very first revelation he received, the angel came to him and asked him to read. And he could not read. And he was telling the angel, what am I going to read? He was pleading. What am I going to read? What actually do you want me to read? I can't read this thing. But the angel would not listen. The angel compelled him, pressed him so hard. And then Muhammad was forced to run out of, you know, the place. In fact, he ran away and he ran into his house. Now, you would think that the very first revelation that Muhammad received was a pleasant revelation where Allah will be revealing to him that, Muhammad, I'm going to be choosing you as um, a prophet among your people. I'm going to be showing you great things. I'm going to be doing great stuff for you. I'm going to be, you know, showing a lot of things to the people of the world, you know, concerning you, concerning or through you. I'm going to do great and mighty things through you. I'm going to open the eyes of the people through you. That was what we expected since God is introducing himself to Muhammad. But that's not what Muhammad experienced. Muhammad got a very big torture of his life. In fact, I don't know if there's anything that is more torturous than what he has received. 
probably they are, I may not know, but that day will never, never, ever be erased in the mind of Muhammad because what he experienced that day is something that could have even wanted him to kill himself because it was a very terrible experience. This is the experience of Muhammad on the mountain of Ira when he got the revelation. This is the first revelation that he received. So a couple of questions comes up. Do you think that this kind of revelation is from God? Do you think that this revelation is actually not a demonic revelation? Especially when you consider some other things that are associated with this revelation. Now that is not the end. There are some shocking things that we also read about Muhammad when he was receiving or whenever the revelation come to him. We're going to be reading this shortly. So we we'll also turn to the Hadith again for more details on what happened to Muhammad when he received his revelation. Narrated by Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, or Al Narrated by Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, Al Arid bin Isham asked Allah's messenger, O oh, Allah's messenger, how is the divine revelation revealed to you? Allah's messenger replied, Sometimes it's revealed like the ringing of the bell, something like bang, 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 bang. Ringing of the bell, this form of revelation is the hardest of all. And then this state passes off after I've grasped what is revealed. Sometimes the angel comes in form of a man and talks to me and I grasp whatever he says. I shall have it. Verily, I saw the prophet being inspired divinely and noticed the sweat dropping from his forehead on a very cold day as the revelation was over. Now, I haven't seen all these experiences of how Muhammad received his revelation. Are you going to conclude that this revelation is actually divine? Are you going to say that this revelation is from divine origin from God Almighty? Are you going to say that this revelation is similar to the revelations that all the prophets before Muhammad received? Now, in your own state of mind, in your own state of honest mind, are you going to conclude that this revelation is actually a divine revelation from God? I haven't seen all the things that Muhammad went through, the tortures, the pain, and all of those things, especially when the angels have to torture him to force him to read what he cannot read. Now, I know that a lot of Muslims are like, well, you see, um, the, the thing that Muhammad experienced is actually, you know, prophesied before. The Ella scripture says that he's going to, you know, have this experience. And um, they try to refer to the Bible in Isaiah chapter um, um, 29, verse 11. And then um, we're going to respond to that as a mother video, not this video. But the truth of the matter is that Isaiah chapter 9, uh, sorry, 29, verse 11 has nothing to do with the account of Muhammad, has nothing to do with the revelation of Muhammad. I think you will agree with me that the encounter that Muhammad had on the mountain of Ira was not an encounter that is divine. It is a terrible encounter and uh, to say the least is a devilish and demonic kind of encounter because no messenger of God will be forced to do something that he does not know how to do. If God wants to receive or give a revelation, according to Quran chapter 14 verse 4, it says that um, when Allah is going to be sending a messenger, he's going to be sending a messenger in the language of his people. And why is Allah doing that? So that the message can be clear to them. Now, if Allah is sending a messenger he did in the language of Zibu and he wants to make the message clear to them, why is he sending Jibril to tell Muhammad to read what Muhammad does not know how to read? And not just that alone. The angel did not even take the courtesy to teach Muhammad what he's asking him to read. But what the angel is actually doing is that he's forcing Muhammad to read it. It's like beating a child to read what he does not know how to read. And you're not even teaching the child to read it, but you're still beating the child. Why don't you read it? Why don't you read it? Say, I don't know how to read it. Come on, read it. I don't know how to read it. You know, to me, it is a terrible experience, a terrible, um, you know, experience for Muhammad. And I, I believe that you're going to agree with me that if you're sincere with yourself, this can never be an experience from the Almighty God. In the next video, we're going to be dealing with Isaiah chapter 29, verse 11, and see if it actually tallies with the experience that Muhammad had on the mountain of Ira. Bye for now.